This tutorial sheet looks at some of the other things that you can do with Laplace, and hence we've denoted them special cases. So in particular, we're going to look at the final value theorem, the initial value theorem, and dead time, and how you incorporate these into Laplace problems. Now this is a tutorial sheet, so the most important thing is that students should pause the video when they've looked at the questions and attempt the questions themselves first. Only once you've attempted the questions should you then have a look at the solutions provided. And do remember, the solutions provided aren't always the only way to do it. There may be several ways, so just because your way is different doesn't mean it's wrong. First a reminder of the final value theorem and the initial value theorem. So the final value theorem is given here. The limit as t goes to infinity of f of t is the limit as s goes to zero of s f of s. But a, a reminder that this is only valid if the underlying signal f of t is convergent. Clearly, if there is no limit for f of t, there's no point applying the final value theorem. You will get rubbish. The initial value theorem is quite similar. The limit as t goes to 0 of f of t is the limit as s goes to infinity of s, f of s. The questions then. You'll notice we've given you six Laplace transforms. What we'd like you to do is use the final and initial values theorems in order to find the final and initial values of the corresponding signals. So we don't want you to do a full inverse Laplace and derive the signals. Just go straight to the theorems and see what you get and demonstrate that you can get the answers quite quickly. Now, now's the time to press pause because I'm about to continue and go through the solutions. First two questions then. We've got f of s equals 2 over s. So remember, the final value of the theorem says we do the limit as s goes to 0 of s f of s, which is the limit as s goes to 0 of 2s over s. Now in this particular case, the s is clearly cancel, and so you get 2. And that's not surprising. That's what you'd expect with a signal like this. What about g of s then? Now, I'm not going to look at the underlying signal, but I can tell, because it's an s squared plus 4, that it's a sine plus a cosine. So here's an interesting question for you. Is there a final value? And obviously, there's not, because it oscillates forever. And therefore, you cannot use the final value theorem. So don't try, because it will give you nonsense. It will give you an answer, but clearly that answer doesn't mean anything. OK, what about the initial value theorem? Well, the initial value theorem, if we do it first for this f of s, we have the limit as s goes to infinity of s f of s, which again gives you 2s over s, the s's cancel, and you will get 2. Straightforward for that one. Can we use the initial value theorem on g of s? Yes, we can. So we're going to do the limit as s goes to infinity of s times 3s plus 6 over s squared plus 4. Now, key observation is if s is going to infinity, then what's going to dominate the numerator is the highest power, and what's going to dominate the denominator is the highest power. So you'll get the limit as s goes to infinity of 3s squared over s squared, which equals 3. Next example then. Now, this is a partially a trick question. If you look at h of s, what do you notice? You notice it's got an s minus 4, which tells you there's an e to the 4t in the solution. It's not convergent. Therefore, you cannot use the final value theorem. So don't try. I can use the initial value theorem on this one, so let's do that. The limit as s goes to infinity of 16s over s plus 2, s minus 4. And there's a thing that you will notice here very, very quickly. This is going to reduce to 16s over s squared, because you can ignore all the lower powers of s, and this gives you a 0, because there's an s squared in the denominator, but only an s in the 
the numerator. So the initial value for this signal is zero. What about the next one? This one is clearly convergent. I can tell that because the, uh, the poles are clearly in the left half plane. So I can apply the final value theorem. So the final value theorem gives me that the limit as s goes to zero of two s minus three times s over s squared plus four s plus eight. And what do we get here? You'll notice that gives you zero because in the denominator, when you let s go to zero, you'll just get the eight. In the numerator, when you let s go to zero, you'll get three s and s is going to zero, so you get naught. Now for the initial value theorem, I'm going to get the limit as s goes to infinity of, it's the same expression, but I'm going to reduce it straight away into two s squared over s squared, which is going to give me two, because in this case, you're taking the maximum powers of s um, and because s is going to infinity. Next example then. OK, we've got s plus 4 over s squared plus times s. So if I apply the final value theorem on this, I'm going to get the limit as s goes to 0 of s into s plus 4 over s into s plus 2 squared. Clearly, those s's cancel. And then when I let s go to 0, I'm going to get 4 over 4, which equals 1. So the final value for this one is 1. What about k of s? Well, again, we've tried to make this rather obvious for you. What do you notice? There's a minus sign. And so it's not convergent. Do not use final value theorem because you will get nonsense from the solution. Some remarks. So where a Laplace transform is not in factorized form, it might not be obvious whether the poles are in the left half plane or the right half plane. And if that's the case, you've got to factorize before you apply the final value theorem. You must check that the signal is convergent before you try. Now, hopefully, no sensible examiner will give you questions in a paper and pen exam where the pole locations are not obvious. And clearly, in general, if things are not obvious, you're going to resort to a computer. You can look at the videos on roots and polynomials, and they might help you spot obvious roots. But I repeat, if the roots aren't obvious, you'll be going to a computer anyway. Now, dead time. So this is the other special, or another special word of Laplace. Now, the way dead time works in Laplace is you say, if I know the Laplace of a signal f of t is f of s, and that signal is then delayed by capital T seconds, then the corresponding Laplace, I just write e to the minus s capital T times f of s. So that's a simple. Now, you see it assumes the signal is zero in negative time. So can we apply that rule now and find the Laplace transforms of the following two signals? So first of all, if I look at this f of t, and you'll notice I've put a delay in it, this t minus 3, then you could say Laplace of 5 e to the minus 2t, that's without the delay, is going to be 5 over s plus 2. And therefore, Laplace of f of t, which you'll see is the same signal but delayed by 3 seconds, is simply e to the minus 3s times 5 over s plus 2. Now I can do a similar trick over here with the m of t. You'll notice I've simply changed the argument of time to t minus 2 to represent the fact that the delay is 2. So I could say, all right, can I do the Laplace of e to the minus 4t sine 3t? So clearly that is without the delay. And the answer is, yes, I can. What I'm going to get is um, 3 over s plus 4 squared plus 3 squared. So there's the Laplace of that signal. Now, if I add in the delay, then the delay was 2 seconds. So the Laplace of m of t is simply going to be e to the minus 2s into 3 over s plus 4 squared.
plus 3 squared. What happens if we want to go the other way? So you'll see I've given you a Laplace transform here and there's clearly a delay in it because you see the e to the minus 5s and I want to know the original signal. So what I do is I first focus just on the bit without the delay. So I'm going to write 3s plus 3 over s squared plus 2s plus 5 equals now if I first of all do the denominator so you can see what's happening you've got an s plus 1 squared plus a 2 squared which is this exponential times sinusoid form so I need to write the numerator an a s plus 1 for the cos plus a 2b for the sine. If I now multiply up top and bottom by the denominator I get 3s plus 3 equals a into s plus 1 plus 2b and now I can match coefficients of s you'll see I get 3 equals a and match constants and I get 3 equals a plus 2b which tells me that b equals naught. So my signal for this Laplace transform is just going to be let's get it right e to the minus t cos 2t there you go. There's the signal that corresponds to the Laplace transform. I've got also, and there's a 3 on the outside. 3 e to the minus t cos 2t. So if I now go back up here and say, all right, what was my original signal? I've got to look at this e to the minus 5s again. So what you've got is 3 e to the minus t minus 5 cos 2t minus 5.